What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna do something a little different. We're just gonna come in here and we're gonna kind of play around with uh, the tools in joint push-pull. So if you remember, that's an extension by Fredo6 um, that allows you to push-pull multiple and also curve surfaces. So let's go ahead and just jump into it, see what we come up with. And uh, as always, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this format. Um, I think the normal extension the normal extension introduction video should start again next week. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So if if you'll remember, joint push-pull is an extension you can download from the Sketchication warehouse that basically allows you to push-pull um, multiple or curve surfaces. So, and, uh, so you have to go install that extension, but once you have it, um, you've got a few different options in here that you don't normally have. Like, for example, if you remember in SketchUp, something like a sphere, if I turn on hidden geometry, it's basically made up of a whole bunch of different flat surfaces. And when you turn that hidden geometry on, you can come in here and select them individually. So what joint push pull does is basically it acts as kind of a multiple face push pull. So in this case, for example, if I come in here and I select the sphere and then I use something like the normal push pull, basically what it's gonna do is it's gonna treat that entire sphere like a series of faces. So you can see how what that's doing is that's coming in here and that's push pulling every one of those hidden geometry faces. So now if I kind of uh, rotate around this, then you can see how it basically extruded each one of those out. So that's kind of a cool effect that we can get just by doing that. Um, there's also, there's other things in here like round push pull. So round push pull is supposed to kind of round off all your edges, but sometimes um, you just kind of have to do a little bit of trial and error because sometimes you can see I'm getting some kind of weird results in here with that. So that may not be the best bet for what we're doing right here. But what we can do is we can come in here and we can basically mess around with our hidden geometry and we can create some kind of interesting stuff by doing that. So if you remember, hidden geometry is basically just geometry that SketchUp when you turn it off, SketchUp doesn't show and it kind of merges the faces. So for example, right now, if I was to use the regular push-pull tool, I could come in here and I could select each one of these faces individually and push-pull it out. However, if I turn hidden geometry off and then I try to do that, it's gonna tell me it can't do that because this is a curved or smooth surface. And really the reason for that is because each one of these is actually multiple surfaces and they just didn't build that functionality into SketchUp. Um, so, but what we can do is we can come in here and we can actually turn hidden geometry on and off to create different stuff in here that we can use, um, that we can use joint push pull to kind of extrude. So for example, um, um, I'm gonna leave hidden geometry on. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off perspective. I'm gonna turn this on parallel projection. And the reason I'm doing that is because what I wanna do is I wanna select all of the, or I wanna select this line, this one line running all the way across in my model. And basically I wanna unsoften it. So when I unsoften it, and remember all I did is I came up here, I selected all those lines, whoops. And then I uncheck the box for soft. Well, when I uncheck the box for soft, SketchUp says, oh, okay, I'm gonna treat this like regular geometry again. So now if I turn off hidden geometry, I've basically split my circle into two pieces. We'll go ahead and move this guy out of the way. So now when I come in here and I select these, I've got half of my circle in here that's in there as geometry. And so what I could do is I could come back in, I could turn hidden geometry back on and then I could do the same thing for the horizontal geometry. So come in here and select it, unsoften it. And now what I've done is I've divided this, this sphere into quads. And I'm gonna turn perspective back on for a second just cause this renders everything kind of funky when you turn it off. But you can see how now this is in here as quads. Well now what you can do is you can go ahead and select like two of those faces and you can say normal push pull and you can push pull those two faces to create the same kind of thing while leaving the other two over here. So you can see how just kind of messing with that hidden geometry gives you a whole bunch of different options and fun things that you can do with that. And it's pretty easy to do. So you could also come in here with the same kind of sphere and I'll go ahead and make another copy of this because we'll probably do some other stuff with it. But you could come in here with this sphere 
and let's say we'll do the same thing hidden geometry on perspective off whoops let's say now instead of using the normal push pull option what I want to do is I want to divide this into quads along the face of my sphere Well, now I could come in here with something like the follow push pull or the round push pull and basically thicken up. So you kind of have to mess around with this to figure out which one of these is the right choice. So you can see how, in this case, the round push pull actually works fairly decent. It's not doing exactly what I want it to up on the top. I may just be able to do a regular push pull. All right, so what that was doing is you can lock this to a plane up here in the tools. So I can lock this to the blue plane by clicking this Z button, or I can set this to the no privilege plane over here. And when I set it to no privilege plane, what it's going to do is it'll basically just extrude it up and out. And so you can come in here and you can make one part of this circle thicker. You can do the same thing. Whoops. You can do the same thing by selecting the surface and push pulling it out down here and you may actually get better results with the round push pull now um, if I turn the privilege plane off. Yeah, that does it a, a lot better. So you can see how now I can come in here and I can do a lot of different things with this kind of sphere shape. I could create kind of a skin on the outside of it. Um, so there's a lot of different things you can do with a curved face by coming in here and messing around with these different options. So another thing I could do if I wanted to is I could turn my hidden geometry on, turn perspective off. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the same kind of thing. I'm going to go ahead and set this to front by clicking on this front view. And I'm going to do the same thing where I come in here and I select this line. But now with that selected, I'm going to use the rotate tool. And I'm actually going to make a couple copies of this, probably at about, let's call it 30 degrees. So I just use the rotate tool with those lines selected in copy mode to create a copy of those. And then I'm going to type in times um, at 30 degrees, probably times 10. Sure, that works fine. So basically what I'm doing is I'm coming in here and I'm dividing my sphere up into different sections. And then I can select all of those different sections by doing a shift click on them. And then once I select those sections, I can use something like normal push-pull. To push-pull those out to give this kind of a almost like you built like a tread or an armor on the outside of the circle. And you can see how that takes a little while, and part of that may be my computer. Part of that is just the amount of geometry that's coming there and creating. But you can see how it's got all these different faces in here. And why don't I undo that, and I'll make a copy, and I'll just kind of show you the difference. So with one of those, I'm going to do that with a normal push-pull. just by clicking and dragging. And then with the other one, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to select all of these, but instead of using a normal push-pull, I'm going to use the joint push-pull option so that it merges all those faces. So, and we'll make sure no privilege plane is selected, and then we'll just kind of click and drag this out. And you can see how the difference is, while the first one extrudes all of those as individual faces, this one push pulls everything out and kind of merges it. So now I've got, I've got a much more smooth face along the outside of this. And so once you kind of figure out how to come in here and do that kind of thing, um, you really have a whole bunch of options for kind of push pulling your uh, different faces and creating cool shapes. And we'll go ahead We'll do one more of these just for fun and see what we can come up with. 
So what I'm planning on doing is I'm just going to come in here and I'm just going to select I'm going to select these lines and I'm going to do the same thing where I uncheck them. Remember you have to have hidden geometry on to do that. And then I'm going to turn hidden geometry back off. Well now I can select these lines and I'm going to save this first. And remember you always want to save before you come in here and you create something or before you use the rotate tool in copy mode which is what I'm going to do. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to have those four lines selected and all I'm going to do is I'm going to put my mouse over this kind of intersection point, so the very top of my circle. And I'm going to use the rotate tool in copy mode. So I'm going to move my mouse down here, I'm going to click and I'm going to tap the control key. And I'm just going to move this over to this corresponding point right here. And then I'm going to type in times, what is that, one, two, three, four. So times four and hit the enter key and what that'll do is that'll create four copies all the way around this. Well now we can come in here and we can select all of those different faces that we just put in here. We'll just fix that real quick. We'll just come in here, click on these lines. There we go, now we should be good. Now we'll turn our hidden geometry back off. We'll go around here and select all these different faces. Once you have the selections, you can either come in here and do like a joint push pull or a, nor a normal push pull to get a couple different effects. So in this case, I'm just gonna do a joint push pull and I'm gonna push this out. And we'll kind of see what we come up with. And then I'll just kind of let it work. And it takes a little while, but you can see how now I've got kind of this ridged object in here so and I don't necessarily like the way that that turned out but part of, part of the fun of this is just kind of playing around with it seeing what kind of shapes you can create that kind of thing so anyway that's where I'm going to wrap up this video leave a comment below let me know what you thought did you like the format where I just kind of go in and show you a few different options for what you can do with something um, do you prefer more of a hey here's a finished product and we're just going to create one thing in a video I'd love to hear your opinion on that so leave that comment below uh, if you like this video please remember to click that like button down below if you're new around here remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider visiting my support me page on my website. That's got everything from links to extensions you can purchase to support the show to uh, links to my Patreon page. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.